What's the crack lads? Welcome back to the channel. Something a little bit different today. We are taking a look back at Pez 2016. Yes, here we are. Here's the title screen. Now I know a lot of you guys are new to the franchise, new to the series, but we also have a couple of old heads as well that would have played Pez 2016. Maybe you gave me a bit of a spanking back in the day in my club. Maybe you liked Master League. Maybe you enjoyed edit mode. We're just going to give you a brief run through. This is the main menu. You've got all the stuff up there. We're going to go straight in and show you. This is from raw footage that I would have had on an old hard drive. So you got your daily login bonus. And this was the main menu. This was like the clubhouse it was called back in the day in my club. This was the main dream team style mode. This is what dream team started out as. You have your divisions versus your comp, my club friendly matches, my club comp competitions and challenges and cups. You could train with your team, you had contract sign-ins, you had your squad management. We're going to go through this quickly, because I don't know if you guys will enjoy these type of videos. Um, but if you do, please do let me know in the comments below and we'll get going. Lads, I'm absolutely wrecked. My throat is so sore from yesterday's stream. Um, but we are pushing through with a bit of content today. This is the squad that we had. I, I, felt like, I felt like my club, right? When you look back at my club and you see the squad that we have here... I felt like my club had a better blend of like, you know, using players that you were actually really enjoyed to use and that you were kind of promoted to use or that they were able to be promoted from within your reserves into your squad. There was more of a grind and more of a build there to it. I didn't feel like that there was as OP players. But again, this is a game that you're going back to PES 2016, which is back nearly 10 years ago. It's mad to think that this is a nearly 10 year old game. You could still renew your contracts with GP or coins. You could open spins with GP or coins. We'll show you that in a sec. But yeah, that was one of the big things is that like a lot of people nowadays are frustrated that you can't use GP. You know, for this, every everything in this game that you had to actually purchase, you could use with GP or coins. So you could earn GP uh, by playing matches and stuff and getting multipliers and stuff, similar to how you do now as your rewards. You had your daily login bonuses, but you could also spin coins and get black balls and gold balls as they were known in this with the pack openings here. You could actually get those with GP. So you could transfer or you could essentially use a double currency. As ever, the matchmaking was ridiculously slow back in the day as well. Some things never change, eh? But you'll see from this menu here that you had edit mode where you could add the kits and you could add the emblems, of course. You could name your team whatever you wanted to name it. You can still do that now. You could base copy your team or you could make your own uh, kits. So you could have your own kits, your own squad stuff. We'll show you my kits in game in a second. This is just a bit of an example. But in terms of the gameplay, lads, as I said, let me know if you guys want to see more of this. I can't get too high because my throat is actually too sore from the stream yesterday. But this is a banger of a goal here. Watch the slickness of the movement. Your boy still had the dribbling back in the day, boys. It's, it's, it's not just something that we got in the last shower or, or came down with. Watch Figo. He's like the hunchback in Notre Dame with the low style, trying the tricks and the flicks. He had a really unique uh, dribbling animation style in this. You had Aryan Robin on his squad. Carlos is my left back forever. We've been playing with Carlos as a left back in, in Pez and eFootball for the last 10 years. He's still in my dream team as of now. Watch Figo. He's like the hunchback in Notre Dame. He's like Gollum going around the place. But we get a beautiful little shot off here. Nearly a goal. And Figo's going to pop up again here in a second with a lovely dribble and finish. But yeah, I mean, the gameplay was very, very, very static. I think when people play uh, eFootball now, the definite potential that is there if they right a couple of wrongs. I mean, we all know the issues with eFootball 2024, boys. We know the issues from playing the game. You know, some people talking about the issues, man. You know, this is the movement here. Beautiful from Figo. Some people talking about the issues with eFootball 2024, like, it's clear that, like, the issues that are there to be seen, you have to adapt in certain ways, but there is certain things from a fundamental point of view that just need to be, you know, Stevie Wonder could see the issues that are there. Now, this was also a points tally challenge. There was different online challenge cups. This is something that I think that Konami could add back very, very quickly to the game. And it was basically a mass six points from four games. So you could get three draws and a win or whatever, you know, added up to that um, to get six points, right? So you could lose, you know, one game and then win the next and then lose another one and then win the next and you could have your six points and then you'd go on, you'd be eligible to re-entry and all that. There was different competitions. There was weekend competitions. I remember back in the day, boys, me and my younger brother would literally stay up to like three o'clock playing the game. But you can see how static and slow the gameplay is. You can see that it wasn't as fluid. I think the gameplay at the moment now 
is probably gone a little bit too fluid in terms of the defending. The defending is just super aggressive. They're the, the, the kits that I was looking at and I was showing you there. You can see the custom badge, the custom kit, and of course the custom sponsor on an Adidas template that you could do in edit mode, which was part of the game as well. You can also see in the top right hand corner where my face is probably covering that you could acquire GP from just basic stuff. And of course we had Master League. I have tons of footage. I think I have about 500 gig of footage of PES 14, 15 and 16 back in my content creation days as the Midnight Kid. But there is Costa signing for our Master League. There is Minandinho uh, after scoring another goal. And then we also had stuff like this, like testimonial matches and stuff like this. So every season in Master League, when you would have players retiring, they would do a, a testimonial game against players that were retiring in game. So you can see Pirlo, you can see Totti, you can see uh, Colo Toro. Uh, Torre and um, Casillas in goals, the Michaelis, a lot of these guys have, have appeared back in Dream Team, but this was something that was nice as well in Master League. So as I said, lads, this was it. You know, this is what we had back in the day. A lot of people probably didn't play PES 2016, but I thought it was a really fun online experience. The gameplay was static. There was a lot of issues with the gameplay. It was very, very fast. It was very speedy and built on that. That was the meta. You know, you still had the play people playing like that meta, but let me know if you guys would like to see more of these type of videos. Do you want to see more Master League? Do you want to see the ebb and flow of, a, of kind of a couple of games? Do you want to see more online stuff? Do you want to see more of the features that was in Master League and my club and do a deep dive on the modes as to what could come into Dream Team and why I think eFootball 2024 is slacking at the moment in terms of feature stuff that should be fundamental uh, to the core experience, right? Gameplay, as I said, eFootball has big potential. But, you know, the path that it's on needs to be cleared up and it needs to be right. This is the changes. This is what we're going for. You know, freedom of play, dribbling being, you know, very important or else passing and moving being important, spacing, the flow of the game, defending, being toned down a bit. We've talked about this for months, okay? It's not just that these issues have started in the last few weeks. But let me know what you think, lads. I will be back very, very soon. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll talk to you then. Peace.